we next have a conversation with Sri Ram Parashuram and Praveen friends who were sent to the United States for their degree in hospital administration there in conversation with them is professor jeevanka traman sai ram and uh, welcome to the studios of uh, radio sai both of you sri ram and praveen uh, my first question is uh, did you dream that you would ever be sitting for a radio interview when you went uh I never imagined that I'll sit for a radio interview at all. When you were in America, did you know that we had a radio service? No, we were we were informed of that. We, What did you think of that radio service? You thought it was one hour a week or something like that? Uh, did anyone tell you anything about what was going on? Uh, we got to know on the it was launched on the birthday, and that's all we knew about it. We that's didn't all. Know anything else about it? Actually, we we wanted to hear hear the radio, but uh, because okay, the transmission. Okay, no, not yet, not yet. America has not yet been blessed. Uh, uh, it's right yeah. only all of Asia. <laughs> and today uh, you have received the extra blessing that you will be heard over the whole of asia and very soon over the whole of europe and Af- uh, africa too Wonderful. so that is the sort of uh, blessing conferred on you on your return now uh, <clears throat> you have been telling some of us about your wonderful experiences and i've also heard you talk about the extraordinary things that happened prior to your departure to america right so i would like to begin at the beginning as they say okay so okay. both of you after you did your msc were hanging around for a while is that right yes sir oh, what are you doing waiting for a signal or something like that we are praying for swami's direction how long did you have to pray not for long oh <laughs> very good you are very lucky have you got any special secrets <laughs> no sir not at all <laughs> maybe the intensity yes. of it okay if i remember correctly the first thing that happened was you were both drafted as phd students R- right yes right? sir right you were do- trying to do phd in chemistry yes sir and i was doing my phd in immunology you were doing or you got started or i I almost went to the synopsis. You almost went to synopsis? That was very good. Good. How about you? I was still uh, debating oh. on the topic I would choose. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You're a slow chooser. Okay. Now, how many months of that period did you go through? It was 15 days. 15 days? That's no big deal. <laughs> okay. What happened afterwards? Um, I changed your destiny, more or less. One evening, it was close to the, 20, the 26th of... July when Swami called us in and said with the vice chancellor and said you I'm sending you all to USA will you all go did you believe it no <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> so what happened afterwards we didn't believe it so we continued our research just like that and He, Swami stopped that yes the first day Swami just said uh, I want I want to take you all to USA are you ready to go and he didn't tell you what you were supposed to do or no, anything like nothing that. he nothing. said I'm I'm going to send you that's it okay so after that how long Uh, passed uh, before something happened the next day till swami called us again and swami asked us to inform our parents and take the permission what were you supposed to tell your parents uh, sri ram uh, we were supposed to tell them that swami has asked us to stop research and uh, asked us to go to us for what uh, praveen what were you supposed to do there did you have any idea i had no inkling at what <laughs> what i'll be doing there and my parents were just they were shocked and they didn't they didn't speak out any word at all <laughs> okay uh, were you shocked too i was i was dazed, dazed. I was dazed. okay <laughs> but i i remember before that uh-huh. he asked the vice chancellor uh-huh. very lovingly in the in the interview room he asked him can i take these boys out of the institute with your permission and send them to us <laughs> How lovely that, how sweet of Swami he always does that sort of thing what's the message you read in that the message is even though Swami is chancellor of the universe he he takes care that other people are are respected based on their position and also other people are respected as human beings and once he gives them some some job he also sees that he also uh, goes through proper lines to get you know, the job done that's what he told me once he said mariyada for sthanam <clears throat> sthanam means position mariyada means respect mm-hmm. must respect the position and uh, i remember a long time ago the then president of india came and he did sastang namaskaram and days and he said no no not here that is separate oh. here you are the first citizen <laughs> and you should not do this <laughs> 
So that's for me. Okay, now coming back to your uh, remarkable uh, Odyssey adventure, I don't know what to call it. So after you were told to go to America or you would be sent to America, how long was it before you know what you were supposed to do in America? You just at two days, just, just two, two days. days. Okay. It is happening so fast. Okay, then after two days, what happened? Uh, initially, we thought that he was just going to send us like he did for the previous students. We would go there for some training and be back. Mm. After two days, he said that mm. we are going, he handed us the applications and said, mm. "This is these are the applications for a Loma Linda University mm. in US and we are going to do a course in Ad, in health administration. So, where exactly is this Loma Linda University and what's it uh, well known for? Because I have only barely heard about it and I'm sure others who are listening wouldn't know anything about it. Can you tell me, Praveen? Loma Linda University, it's situated in uh, California. It's Southern California? It's, it's in Southern California. Mm-hmm. It's one hour drive east of Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And Loma Linda University is famous for its proton therapy which it claims that there's only two or three places in the world which do proton therapy. Proton therapy. Yeah. Do they have an accelerator and all that? They have the accelerator and they're very famous for that. I see. And also they're also famous for being very few people who follow vegetarian diet in United States. <laughs> <laughs> they are they're Adventists. Uh-huh. And they have done an interesting study in Loma Linda mm-hmm. called the Adventist Health Study, mm-hmm. wherein they have proven scientifically the benefits of a healthy vegetarian lifestyle. A very late discovery, I must say. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> won't you agree? <laughs> okay, yes. we won't debate uh, all that. By the way, have they heard what Swami says about vegetarian diet and things like that? Uh, they, they do it for health reasons. Okay. So they don't understand the deeper implications. They, they do not understand the deeper okay. Actually, when they asked us why we follow vegetarian, mm. we are telling... We, we told them about what Swami tells, how the animal thoughts impact our mind. Mm-hmm. And they're... They sort of believed and not believed. Okay, and it takes you don't become a convert in one day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now getting back to your uh, great American adventure of discovery. Swami said go to America, but then, you know, that doesn't happen that easily. You have to apply and then I think you have to pass some tests. Is that right? What, what kind of entrance test do you have to take uh, before you get in there? There are two entrance tests for graduate uh, course. Mm-hmm. A, a graduate master's course which we were going for mm-hmm. one was a graduate GRE the graduate record examination mm-hmm. and the other was a TOEFL the test of English as mm-hmm. a foreign language mm-hmm. and uh, Swami told us on, on that day it was mm-hmm. close to the 30th of July when he said uh, you have to go to Bangalore mm-hmm. and there are two little exams you have to take mm-hmm. and he said you have my blessings you will do well <laughs> and uh, how long did you have to take the exam? we were told that Exam scores had to go in in a matter of uh, 10 days. Hmm. So we are told like you have nine days to prepare and you're going to take the exam. But we, we didn't have any textbooks. So by the time we got the textbooks, only five days were left. Oh God. And by Swami's grace, we got a very good date on You mean nine. like in America they have fast food fast this is <laughs> fast examination <laughs> it was it was a really it was like a crash course we initially we initially thought that we would go to bangalore swami mm. told us to go to bangalore and enroll in a coaching center mm. we went to the coaching center and we found out that people the coaching center runs its course for a month people attend these coaching center classes for a month study for a couple of more months and then take the gre my god typically what's the kind of question they ask in gre just a sample there are three different sections in the yes, GRE. Yes. The one is the English section, yes. uh, which has got a wonderful word list that goes close to 7,000 words and not very wonderful sounding words, actually. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and then there's uh, an analytical section where they test your logical and uh, deductive s- skills. And lastly, there is a section on... Uh, on numerical ability, mm-hmm. which Indians normally do well. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you had just five days and uh, how did you manage to clear it? I know it, uh, it was all Swami's grace, but let's hear the full story. On the first day, we were told to go to a coaching center. Mm-hmm. We went and told them that we want to do the co- the entire course in two days and, and take the practice test. Did they fall down from the chair when you said that? They said, no, it's not impossible. You're, you're not telling the truth. And we said, we have to take it. And we, told, we showed them the dates. And then they said... <clears throat> Okay, but I don't think we're going to teach you because our our reputation is at stake if we take you in. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> so we had to uh, split with them to allow us take those practice tests so we went back to sai gokulam mm-hmm. and locked our door and we kept on reading and reading but our, our we, faith was at its lowest sir <laughs> during during those few days did you read or did you pray <laughs> we were we were praying we were scolding swami we were telling why did you get us out of research and thrust us into this position where we have to save the name of our institute save our own face and and god even save your name i mean <laughs> we had the audacity to question that <laughs> Okay so what happened tell us about the exciting final moments uh, initially the first practice test we took our score barely crossed 1000 and uh, what is supposed to be a respectable score mm, 1800 1800 oh you're less than <laughs> far away far away okay, far oh. away and and in the actually in the first test we did a lot of guess work and we were just It's, we thought it's not possible. We so when you hit a, hit a, an all-time low, what was your feeling like? An all-time low. <laughs> <laughs> that was good one. <laughs> Did you believe that you would be going to America? In a... No. <laughs> not at all. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking of running away. <laughs> <laughs> My God. No, it's a hair-raising adventure. All right. But okay. later, during the course of the week, mm-hmm. after the three days of... we are locking ourselves behind the doors of the satyasai gokulam and studying all day and all night the score slowly started to improve mm. we saw the elusive 1200 and the even more elusive 1500 mm. so as we got to the date of the exam our scores were improving but we were still short of the 1800 mm-hmm. and finally what did you actually get when you took the test at the end of 5 days or so We got more than we expected, actually. Sure, I know that. And but how much more? <laughs> no, well, sir. Uh, actually, during the break, hmm. during the break, when during the GRE exam, they give you a break. Hmm. During the break, I was feeling really low. You know, I almost went to the corner and almost was. I was, I was almost choked. I was telling, should I go back and take this test? It's, it is, it's going to be futile. It's going to be futile. We both met each other and we're looking at her face. Both are blank. And we were like, like <laughs> Swami, you have to save us now. <laughs> we, okay. We went back. And save yourself so too. So did the Abad Bandha come to your help? So we went back and, you know, the exam got over. And then they say, you know, click on this button to see your score. <laughs> we don't want to do that. <laughs> oh. Actually, we hated those online exams where you have to know. Okay. So instant uh, results. <laughs> instant results. <laughs> and we, but we didn't have a choice because this was the only exam we could take. This was the only month and this was the only exam we could take and we had and the scores had to go to the Loma Linda University immediately so that mm. we could get there. Okay, then so we just you closed, pressed the button. We closed our eyes and pressed the, the button. button. <laughs> and we didn't open our eyes for a couple of seconds and But then we were shocked. We were shocked to see the scores. And what were they like? It they read <laughs> 2150 and 2100. 2150 from 1200 in just 5 days i Does mean that's incredible it looks like swami clicked the mouse of the computer <laughs> <laughs> obviously what do you mean by saying it looks like okay so what were your thoughts when you saw this uh, stupendous score i i hated myself for all that i thought and all that i said the last few days really uh, my own faith was so feeble in swami that you know in spite of being with swami for so many years i even at the moment when i was supposed to have so much faith in him i doubted him i scolded him and i was i i behaved in a very human way well swami makes us sometimes see our mistakes clearly so that we change this happens to all actually when we told this coach to that coaching center they they didn't believe us they said you're it's not possible so uh, no we had, wonder we had to go and show our scores to them only only then they believed and they put it on their notice board saying that in 5 days our coaching center has produced oh they made captain after rejecting you and disowning you and all that sort of thing so they understood what sai power is very good so after you got this fabulous record making uh, score what happened next did we tell you sir that we had to take only the gre hmm. there was no toefl to take oh i see what happened to that that the lomalinda university exempted hmm. us from taking toefl how did they do it without even seeing you 
<laughs> well, we uh, we sent a statement of purpose mm-hmm. wherein we wrote what w- the reason we were choosing this healthcare profession. Yes, yes. And they were really impressed with what we had written in there. And also, the statement of purpose contained everything about Swami and nothing about us. So naturally, we wrote yeah. about Swami's hospital. And we wrote about the service activities we had done here during the Gram Seva, mm-hmm. and everything in the Satyasai Institute that shaped us to what we were today. And they read it and they were really impressed. They said, "These boys have a good standard of English." They saw the courses which we had taken and said, "These boys are master students from a good university in India, and we don't think they have to take TOEFL." Good, that's very nice. So that was a break for you. So you cleared this GRE, and I suppose the next thing was filling in all the forms and uh, posting them and so forth. Yes. And after that comes the admission card and then the uh, great quest for the visa, right? Right. Sir. So tell us about the visa story, if there was any. <laughs> Hanuman didn't need a visa, but uh, modern Hanuman, stainless Hanumans need visas. Okay, so how did he get the visa? Uh, so by this time, it was the end of August, early September or something yes, like that? Yes, it was close to the 6th of September when we had filled in our visa applications. And oh, okay, the 11th September had not yet come. Had not yet come. Mm. I was sh- I'm was. i sure it was very close. It, it was uh, close. It must have affected you in some way. Well, we, were, we were not aware of anything no, that no was... No, no, not at happened. that time, but it was going to affect you, wasn't it? Oh, yes, it affected, it affected his well. Okay, it affected that his is greatly. a very interesting story. So now, over to you about that story. Uh, the visa process is a very interesting process. Currently, mm. uh, they don't... Initially, when you apply for a visa, you're supposed to put in all your documents in an envelope and send it to the consulate. Mm. The consulate looks at all your documents and then grants you, sends you the visa through post. Mm. So we left on the 9th of September. Swami blessed us and said, mm. collect your visa from Bangalore and mm. move on. Okay. So the visa was to come by post from Madras to Bangalore. Mm. We reached Bangalore on the. You mean night. they don't interview you? Initially, they send it by post. Mm. We reached Bangalore on the 9th of sep- September. Mm. Actually, to say, I have to say one thing here because mm. God, whenever He does something, He always tests you and only does only then only He gives you the success in anything. And okay, once uh, once again, before you go for a visa, you must have a passport. Did you have enough time to get a passport, or was there any? Oh uh, my! <laughs> Actually, oh, ah, one of you must tell us about that first. One of the requirements for the GRE exam was to have a passport ready. Okay. And when GRE exam was scheduled for ninth, yes. and on six we didn't have our passport, and usually the passport process takes a couple of weeks minimum. So, yeah, minimum. Minimum. Mm-hmm. minimum. If you take the normal route, it takes 45 days. Okay. So, so, to, so, so we just, how did you get uh, through with less than the minimum number of days? That must be a story. Who is going to tell you? We, we couldn't apply for a passport in Bangalore because we were not residents of Bangalore. Oh, I see. But huh. we, because I originally, I, my, I hail from Bombay. Yes. And Praveen hails from Andhra Pradesh. Andhra Pradesh. Yes. So we couldn't apply in Bangalore. You couldn't say you studied in Vrindavan or something. But like. that's what that's that's what the visa officer told us. <laughs> Did you study any number of years in Bangalore? It just struck us. He said, write your permanent address as Sri Satya Sai Hostel Vrindavan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was that gentleman uh-huh. who suggested to us to write our address as Sri Satya Sai Hostel Vrindavan. And then you got the passport. And we got our passport in Six hours, sir. Six hours? Six Jesus. hours. <laughs> That's amazing. Instead of 15 days, which is the minimum. It, okay. GRE was one record and six hours passport is another record. Yeah. Now, let's hear the story of the visa. So, you applied for a visa. You sent everything by post to Madras and you were waiting for the visa to come by an envelope, right? Right. And you were sitting in Bangalore for that. And sitting in Bangalore. Okay. And we got a phone call huh. that the envelope had reached for reached Bangalore mm. and we rushed to Mr. Sri Srinivas who mm. had our envelopes. Mm. We opened the envelopes and mm. saw that, sorry, mm. your visa mm. has been rejected. Mm. Please come and present yourself in Madras okay. for an interview. They wanted to see you. Yes. Mm. There were some doubts regarding certain documents of ours, or the purpose for which we were going. Mm. So they decided, this, they asked us to present ourselves mm. in Madras mm. on the 12th of September. 12th of September. And so, uh, you got this letter on what date? On the 9th of September. 9th of, oh God, just two days ahead. Mm. So we reached Madras and Swami asked us to stay at Sundaram. And suddenly we just 
we were actually having dinner with one of the gentlemen there and he got a phone call from his daughter who stays in united states saying that please switch on the cnn and watch the news it was 8 it was close to 8 pm on 11th september night mm-hmm. when we got this phone call mm-hmm. they told us to switch on the the tv set and mm-hmm. see what was going on mm-hmm. we switched on the tv set and we saw the one of the twin towers in flame mm-hmm. a plane had crashed into the tower and we With thought our hopes of getting the visa crashed <laughs> <laughs> we thought it was an air accident and then later in front of our own eyes we saw another plane coming and crashing live into the second tower and in less than 20 minutes the tower came crumbling down and and so and did your <laughs> thoughts of going to america oh th- yes <laughs> okay so next day what happened in actually the our thoughts of going to america was still in air okay. it didn't crash down completely but we we felt really sorry for we felt really bad for what was going on there our heart felt really went out to the people there so next day we went to I the i presume the embassy. consulate was closed yes. we went to the embassy and they said we are closed today the consulate mm. come closed. tomorrow mm. so we went the next day and we went through all the huge line system they have in the embassy mm. we went there and actually there are two people there and we are standing in the long queue mm. and then suddenly the next window opened so we thought now it's faster chance to get visa and so we went and stood in front of the next window mm. believe me sir the mood that day in the consulate was bad okay i'm not surprised people, people were people were pained because the people they were pained because of what happened in their country mm. and many many of them had lost their loved ones and it was understandable mm. and this lady the mm. consular officer whom we presented ourselves to for a mm. visa was not the best of persons <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> so she asked us to come forward and we both of us went and showed her documents mm. she looked at the documents we didn't have any letter which says that we are sent by swami hospital mm-hmm. we just went as praveen and shriram mm-hmm. and we just presented our documents she looked at the documents and she went inside and she said go and sit down i'll call you after some time mm-hmm. so after a wait of after a long wait of half an hour the lady comes back mm-hmm. she calls us one by one mm-hmm. first she calls praveen mm-hmm. and then she talks to him hastily for some time and suddenly says your visa i'm sorry i'm rejecting your visa application mm. i hear that and i go rush and start arguing with that lady mm. she takes my passport she doesn't ask me even one question mm. and directly stamps a reject mm. on my passport too then we told her we already got the application process done and we are supposed to join the institute on 24th mm-hmm. she said you won't be going there because i'm not I'm giving you the i'm not visa. giving you your visa and she just pulled down the blinder mm-hmm. in front of her eyes and we were there shocked that this was on the 12th this was on the 13th, 13th. okay oh, sorry the 13th around uh, 12 o'clock in the uh, midday or 2 o'clock or something like that right yes right sir. then what happened you went so you must have got your visa how did the visa suddenly materialize <laughs> we were we were utterly devastated because he saw me had blessed us and saw me told us go it's time for you to go to the us you have my blessings and we were not even able to get our visas to board the flight mm. and we were sitting there and in sundaram and crying when swami said don't worry he sent a message don't worry i'll take care of everything and slowly things started moving some unseen his unseen hand started moving things and the next day the consulate it it got a letter from the chief minister sm krishna and he said that uh, this the hospital has done so much for our state and it's a request from the state of karnataka mm. that this boy should be granted visa mm. and those people were shocked mm. because they didn't know whom they're dealing with they're dealing with god mm. so they're shocked and they said immediately they called us and they said uh, we are very sorry for for all this but thing is once a visa officer stamps it mm. they have regulatory power and no one can go against it so they said we'll consider it but they didn't move forward they said that they would try to talk to the visa officer who had rejected us mm. but she she wouldn't relent she wouldn't 
move an inch on the stand she had taken she had rejected our visas and she stood by it okay and s- s- immediately phone calls started coming from the vice president's office from the governor of tamil nadu president of india i mean from the yeah. office of the vice president of india my god from the from the office of the governor of tamil nadu you are rejecting two students from the satya sai institute of higher medical sciences yeah. please reconsider your decision you are doing a big mistake mm. and there was no change there was no change there was no change they were saying we'll give you the visas but it didn't look like they're going to give us the visas it looked like they were playing a game with us you know okay. they were they were keeping us waiting they said all right we'll consider it when the when the when the consulate general returns from delhi mm. on the on the on the 17th or on the 18th mm-hmm. thing is we are supposed to board the flight the next day on on 18th itself and by the time that person comes we are chance of going to us would have completely gone into the, in the wind but swami said on the 17th he sent a message that mm. tomorrow afternoon mm. at 3:30 pm you will have your visa in your hands <laughs> and did you believe we <laughs> <laughs> believe this time <laughs> okay good good <laughs> for you what <laughs> yes, yes i'm glad our otherwise was, you would have flunked our faith was strengthened okay. and we believed it yes very good and then in the morning the consulate calls the the government of tamil nadu requesting for increase of security because of 911 mm-hmm. accident the and so the consular the consular officer called the principal secretary mm-hmm. of the tamil nadu, tamil chief, nadu chief secretary the chief right. secretary mm-hmm. of the of the tamil nadu government mm-hmm. and the Chief Secretary of the Tamil Nadu government mm. t- a few days ago he had told us that even his son mm. they had rejected his son from giving uh, from the visa mm. so he said I'll try to somehow uh, get get the visas for Swami students mm. because that was a service he wanted to do for Swami so uh, he was a devotee he was he's a devotee, a devotee. he's a devotee mm. of Swami mm. so this this consular officer called the chief the chief secretary of the Tamil Nadu government and said we want uh, we would like to meet you this afternoon at 4 pm mm. to ask for an increased security for mm. the consulate mm. so the chief secretary said you all can come over mm. at 4 pm for the meeting but before you come over for the meeting please give those two sai students who are going to the us their visa <laughs> and it never happened in the past and it'll never happen in the future too once a visa officer stamps the passport is saying rejected it's never happened and it'll never happen that again she herself calls the student back and gives them the visa and it's a rule it's a policy of the embassy that they they don't hand deliver the visas they send it to post and goes in the next day but for for us they got the visas and directly deliver it at the those steps of sundaram she to she took back your uh, passports and then restamped she it she took back the passports restamped it came over handed it over to us and apologized for she it. came on her own uh, personally she came personally to sundaram no no we were we were we were staying with mr we were discussing we were spending time with mr shrinivasan shrinivas oh. mr shrinivas oh he had come there he had come there okay so she came over there handed over the visa and apologized and moved on fantastic so we began to see the power of god <laughs> we began to see the power of god but yeah. there were so many buts believe me <laughs> we we had the ticket that night from singapore to the us but we had no ticket to get from madras to singapore so how did you jump for the ocean like anuman did what did you do? yeah anuman didn't have to carry a suitcase <laughs> Oh, so it was believe me so every step we were we were we were able to see swami's hand that took us closer and closer so how did you get the ticket from uh, madras to singapore we don't know what happened the vice president the vice president of singapore airlines someone contacted from someone from our trust contacted him and said mm-hmm. swami is sending two boys to united states and they don't have any ticket from madras to singapore mm-hmm. can you help us with it mm. and he immediately called the ticket office and said uh, please give the tickets to them but the tickets had to come from singapore mm. so he just sent a fax of those tickets to us mm. with his signature and said please present this in to the office there and they'll do the rest so the singapore airlines from singapore carried our tickets to madras mm. and we reached madras that night without a flight ticket with just a fax <laughs> 
And you showed the facts at the chicken counter? We yeah. showed the facts at the chicken counter. Did they fall down? <laughs> Those guys looked at the facts and they saw the signature down. Of and said, uh, can we upgrade you to the executive class? Oh boy, that's a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> so you're kicked upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, uh, so traveling first for me is great, isn't it? it it's really luxurious. It was <laughs> fantastic. The, even travel was possible that day because of Swami. Forget so, traveling in that in that in that comfort and in that safety which Swami had provided for us. Okay, so uh, you have now brought us up to the airplane and you're riding in the airplane and then we have one more whole year to go through and I think we will reserve all that for the next session nice. and at this point I would like to say that it was a great experience for us in Radio Side to have you here <clears throat> it's wonderful for me to listen to all this some of these stories can be heard over and over again but I think the real point about all this is how Swami makes things happen. He sort of dangles uncertainty before you to see whether you have the faith or not. Because most of us flunk in that right. department. <laughs> <laughs> and we flunk again and again. But he doesn't lose faith in us. And he says, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. I'll give you one more chance. And he takes us all the way through. So that is the loving God, the living God, and the most wonderful God. You didn't tell me about the photo session in the interview room. I think uh, I was there. That yes, was a fantastic Swami, session, wasn't it? Swami was so loving. Fussing around, uh, making you wear the tie, the coat. And oh, he was so loving. We were going to the U.S. for an education. We didn't have any dress for, mm. not to dress appropriately there. Mm, just he, T-shirts and jeans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what did he do? He, he, Swami especially got that suit material from Japan. From Japan, yeah. he, he called us one. He called us one evening to mm. Pune Chandra and handed out this suit material and said, "Do you like this color? I have got this for you all from Japan. My God, do you all like the color?" We were shaken and we almost. The, the, his love, his love brought us to tears. And then he got this. He the cyst he, custom he, made. He said, "See, go to Bangalore when you're and get them stitched, and come before you go, come and wear them and show it to me." We will take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember so many poses: standing, sitting, <laughs> sitting, standing. He was he was a he was a mother. So that yes. that evening he was a mother. Oh, Swami wow. took care that everything was perfect. Our <laughs> hair was combed. Our ties were straight, and it was it was like he, just amazing. He straightened our tie. He straightened our collar, and he just you no know, he. He just groomed us as a mother would groom her child. And then... I have to see many uh, mothers still who are just a tie. <laughs> <laughs> Not in this country, at least. That's uh, Swami. He was also, I suppose, giving you a lot of memories to live by for one year away from you. Right, sir. Swami is giving us... And uh, before you left, he said something about you'll be back within a year, didn't he? Yes, sir. Uh, he, he gave those photos to us and he said... Take, he gave us those photos and said, take them to US and mm. and remember me actually before going to before going from Parthi to Bangalore we both of us were in the interview room and we were crying he said Swami from our young age we never moved away from Swami for so many years so, so many long for, such, so for long. so long mm -hmm. and we were crying we said like how can he stay away for such a long time mm -hmm. and Swami said one year will pass like one day and it did happen. And it your was, course was supposed to last how long? He's, the course was, when you take the course part-time, it goes to five years. Mm -hmm. When you take it full-time, it mm -hmm. goes to two years. Two years. Two years. Uh, and he told you you'll be back in one year. Uh, we, calculated, uh, we calculated things and said, best case scenario, we'll be back in 18 months. 18 months. And, and he told you was it less than one year. He said yeah. you'll be back within a year. And then you're back in? 363 days. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you just made it before the bell went. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes. So, yes. did you believe that she would be back that fast? No, sir. We no. Didn't. When we went there initially. So, we with hard. God's grace, the impossible becomes possible. Becomes possible. Okay. So, we'll meet again for another session. Right. Thank you so much, Sairam. God bless you. It is my service. Sairam, and welcome to you both once again. 
I suppose uh, since we last met, uh, you have been busy trying to get back into your old stride, shall I say, becoming familiar with the hospital and all that, and I hope the re-entry is not too difficult. Anyway, I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about your trip to America, which I'm sure you must be remembering most fondly. If I remember correctly, last time we broke off at the point where you were boarding a plane from Madras to Singapore. I suppose you landed safely in America. Now, why don't you tell us about, uh, uh, tell us, me, me and the listeners, about what happened afterwards and what kind of experiences you had there. Now, who is going to start? Maybe you can start straight on. We, we landed in America on the on the 19th of September. Yeah. It was 8.30 p.m. on the 19th of September. And our, our, our classes in Loma Linda were to start on the 24th of September. So we had just two days because Loma Linda, we, as we told you, is an Adventist college and everything closes on Friday afternoon too. We landed there on a Wednesday night. We just had a Thursday and a Friday to settle down and get to our university. <laughs> So, baptism by fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope the fire didn't burn you, but purified you. So, what happened after you got uh, admitted and started your studies? Actually, the entire admission process itself was unbelievable, sir. We, we I thought you were already admitted. But we had not... Oh, I did not tell you this. Dr. Seti, Dr. Ram Seti was yes. responsible yes. for arranging, uh, for contacting the authorities at Loma Linda University. Yes. When we landed at, in US, yes. Dr. Seti told us that he was able to carry out huh? the entire paperwork for our admission process without making a single visit to Loma Linda University. Oh, that's fantastic. It was, everything was done over phone. Yes. They had not seen Dr. Seti. They had not seen us. Usually, it's normal. They no, didn't tell yeah. you that you can undergo the course without going to the university. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. You had to physically go there and study, right? That's good. So, we reached there. We, we, we reached Loma Linda at 8 a.m. on Friday morning. Mm. And we had time till 2 p.m. Mm. when everything closes down in the and city. And you are asleep most of the time due to jet lag, I suppose. By by Swami's grace, we didn't have any jet lag. Actually, oh, we didn't we didn't experience jet lag, so we were so fresh and actually, ready. We were waiting go. for jet lag, but it didn't come. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, was the admission smooth? There was no problem. It was, it was perfect. Hmm. We went to the university. Hmm. The the moment they saw us, the authorities told us, "Oh, you are those two boys from India. Hmm. So you are the two students from India who came here in." Less than a month. <laughs> and they congratulated us. They said, you are, boys are so lucky. You don't realize your admission process was a miracle by itself. Papers are not processed so fast in this country. <laughs> Even in that country? Even in that country. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. So, how was the course and um, how did you find it? Because we are from science background, we are very wary that... Uh, we would find it difficult because of all accounting and finance. So we oh, it was a management-oriented course. Uh, yes, you had gone for hosp hospital administration. Hospital administration, sir. It's this. This course gives you not only a managerial insight to hospital administration, it also equips you with clinical knowledge mm -hmm. so that you can handle hospitals. So our science background helped us to deal with the clinical side, mm -hmm. but there was an. A, a entirely new curtain and a world behind that curtain which we had never explored the world of management it was totally new to us good so how did you cope up with it by Swami's grace we did very well actually you mean to say Swami had to work overtime for you two fellows over there <laughs> actually I think he did <laughs> <laughs> poor Swami has to work for the entire population of the world 6.5 billion ok so how did you travel Swami let me know more about uh, the first day in class mm. we were so nervous we were the youngest people in the class I see what was the average age like we had a classmate who was uh, 75 years old. 75? Jesus Christ, that's older than me. <laughs> An average age was around 50, I think. 50? I see. There were, there were doctors who had completed their... who were well settled in their career and they had come for this 
course, Masters in Public Health, there were nurses who would work in hospitals and they came down for this MPH course. There were lawyers who wanted a who wanted to get an insight into healthcare administration so that they could make their living a lot more prosperous. <laughs> okay, so you saw the whole world from the oldest to the youngest and you are the youngest. And uh, how are the classes like and how different is it from our style of teaching, instruction, etc., etc.? There the main emphasis is on projects and assignments. Hmm. The classes as such were <laughs> grouped like if a, if a class has three credits, mm. it, it was held once in a week and continuous three hours a week. Mm -hmm. And we had classes usually in the night because most of them were professionals and they used to come for the class in the night. So class used to go from six to ten in the night. So in the mornings, we used to do all the assignments and projects which were, which were in large large number. You are used to a certain style of life here in our institute, in Brindavan and Prasanthinale. And you are going to a v country that is very far away and has an entirely different culture and philosophy of life, etc., etc. Did you experience any cultural shock and uh, any problems in adjusting to that way of life, starting from food, which is always a problem, not so much in America, but still it could be a problem uh, in that in that in that respect sir we could say that god was really merciful he knew that he knew that we would why be in that respect god is always merciful <laughs> <laughs> oh in that respect god was extremely merciful oh, okay. that's a little <laughs> he was better, extremely huh? merciful okay. because he saw to it that we were in a place which was totally vegetarian Mm -hmm. The campus was totally vegetarian. How come it was vegetarian? Uh, the Seventh-day Adventists believe in a vegetarian lifestyle for health reasons. Very interesting. I never heard that before. <laughs> and I suppose most it would come as a surprise to most of our uh, listeners. Did you know about this before? Or no, you? sir. We were not aware of this. Okay, good. We were thrilled to know that the campus was not only 100% vegetarian, mm. it was alcohol-free, drug-free, smoke-free. Oh, it was heaven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> it is the only university in uh, United States of America with vegetarian diet as its And they food. didn't consider themselves as strange weirdos or... Uh, no, they were proud of it because the Loma Linda University has done an Adventist health study. Mm -hmm. They have done an extensive project funded by the government called the Adventist health study. Mm -hmm. In the Adventist health study, they have proved mm -hmm. scientifically mm -hmm. the benefits of a vegetarian diet. Okay, talking about diet, did you by any chance have an occasion to tell them about the uh, spiritual advantages of a uh, vegetarian diet apart from, you know, maybe it uh, reduces the risk of heart attacks and stuff like that? Yes. Actually, when, when we are eating with other other Americans, mm -hmm. they used to ask us why why are you eating vegetarian food? Mm -hmm. We told them we don't we don't eat vegetarian food just for health reasons. Mm -hmm. We also eat it because it's spiritually beneficial to us. Mm -hmm. We told them that it the food affects our mind. So when you, when you eat an animal food, you also get those animal thoughts. But here, when you eat a vegetarian diet, you get more of pure thoughts and. <laughs> Did they buy that? They or? call it superstition. <laughs> <laughs> superstition. <laughs> they call it superstition. But one one argument which I, I which which we gave them was very convincing. Mm. They said no no no. There should be something deeper. Mm -hmm. Why do you still eat vegetarian food? Mm -hmm. Then I said we said that we don't believe in taking a life to sustain our life. Mm. The 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 Hindu dharma Sanatan dharma says mm -hmm. that you should never take one life to sustain your life. Mm. So that's one reason I we we are all vegetarians. Mm, so that went home. That that went home. <laughs> Good. Perfect. No, you are okay as far as food is concerned. What about other things? Actually, by the time we finished our admission process, it was around one fifty-five, and there are only five minutes left for us to get an apartment. Otherwise, we had to stay, sleep on the stars of the day. <laughs> so we rushed to the apartment apartments the rental office the, the, the rental, rental office rent. and there we found that all the apartments were sold off and if you want to hire an apartment you have to hire a very costly one oh my god we didn't have any other choice but <laughs> to rent we rented an expensive apartment then moved to another apartment a, a, a lot suiting to our Indian lifestyle 
uh, how are you able to adjust to the campus lifestyle? What I mean is that here, you know, you are used to suprabhadam and uh, so many other things, bhajans and all that. And did going there throw you out of gear with respect to all those things? Actually, in the morning, we used to get up and do suprabhadam and bathe them. Mm-hmm. Because only both of us were staying in the apartment. And no one complained you are disturbing my no, sleep. No, and nobody it. complained we were, we were disturbing Actually, them. in the later stages, other people used to come and join us, even though they are not devotees. The, for Suprabhadam? No, 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 no. For bhajans. For bhajans, bhajans, and, bhajans, for bhajans in the evening. Uh-huh. But the most surprising thing was the first day when we went to, to college for orientation, mm-hmm. we sat down there mm-hmm. and the dean walked in. Mm-hmm. He She welcomed all of us mm-hmm. and said that, she said, it's customary for us to begin every academic year and every class during our academic year with a prayer. Mm-hmm. And she, she asked us all to join her in prayer. Mm. And, uh, that was no surprise uh, to you? That was no surprise. <laughs> that was a big surprise to us. Okay, really that way. Because yeah. I had... It was not unusual for you. It was not unusual, but we were so thrilled when that happened. Mm. We didn't expect it to happen there. And... And we would pray every every day before every class. And every Wednesday, mm. we would have chapel. Mm-hmm. We'd have to go to church and th- the music was beautiful. There was, th- there was a choir singing mm-hmm. and there were wonderful talks. That's like a moral class on Thursdays, something like, like, like Kind of like our awareness classes. Tell me, were you ever asked to speak about our institute and some of his missions and things like that, formally or informally? Informally, when... And here with the professors, they used to ask us about our hospital, our college. And mm-hmm. when we told them, they are very surprised and they asked, if such an institute exists, mm-hmm. why is it not known to us? Mm-hmm. Then we said, like, our philosophy is that we don't publicize our achievements and we do it for the sake of the work and not for publicity. Mm-hmm. I-, I still remember the first day of orientation. Uh, it was evening time and... Uh, we were having a welcome volleyball match mm-hmm. and that time one of our accounting professors he he walked up to us and said oh so you boys are from India mm-hmm. he said yes and why have you come here we said that there's there's a wonderful hospital in India run by our spiritual guru our master called Master Satya Sai Baba mm-hmm. he has sent us here so that we could have our education and health administration and then the talk moved to the kind of hospital we have there. Mm-hmm. So we told him that, oh, ours is a charity hospital. Mm-hmm. He said, oh, you have done an excellent thing. You have come to Loma Linda because Loma Linda too is a, is a, is a charity hospital. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but the definition of charity is very different. Is very different. One more interesting thing we noticed there is in the hospitals, they too, they have volunteers. Mm-hmm. But those volunteers come come to a hospital to volunteer only because they get a certificate after that, mm-hmm. which they can show and go higher in their career. It's not out of devotion or anything like that. There is self-interest all the way. Uh, that's not surprising. Uh, even here in this country, there is self-interest in almost all places except in Swami's institution. Tell me about some interesting experiences you had over there. What kind it be? One very important experience which stands out is as soon as we went there, we had to take a class in managerial accounting. Actually, that was a higher level of accounting class which we didn't have any foundation for. Hmm. So, we were very scared but we just prayed to Swami and went to the class. And actually, we completed the class with an A. Mm-hmm. We aced the class. And then <coughs> we took another higher class. And after that, they told us, see, you have missed a lower class, so you need to take that. We couldn't take that because of the 9-11 incident. Mm-hmm. So we were wondering how to take it because it comes only in the September, month of September. And... Swami has asked us to come back in a year's time. Mm-hmm. Swami said we would come back in a year's time. Actually, he didn't ask us. He <laughs> he, he he just pronounced it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so so we are scared because they couldn't wave it or anything like that. They didn't. No, they didn't we asked them actually. <laughs> they said that it's a policy that everyone should go through that class because we didn't have our undergraduate degrees. 
was a science degree. We didn't have a basic course in accounting. Even though we had got A grades in a master's level accounting <laughs> class, they were not letting us get out of it because yeah, we didn't re- have an undergraduate level accounting. This reminds me of an interesting uh, story, not a story, incident. That's, I think I must tell because it's so <laughs> fantastic. You must have heard of Enrico Fermi, the right. Italian who built the first reactor and was the father of the bomb, so as they say, atomic bomb. He is from Italy and he was given the Nobel Prize, I think, in 1938 or 9. And the war was about to begin and he was trying to run away from Italy. So he went, uh, he had been nominated for the Nobel Prize, he had been declared the winner. He went to the U.S. Embassy in Rome and he had to prove he was literate. He had to literally do some <laughs> 2 plus 2 equals to 4 and all that because a lot of immigrants from Italy were supposed to be illiterate and they were causing problems. So he said, look, I'm going to Stockholm to collect the Nobel Prize. He said, that's between you and Stockholm. As far as our immigration <laughs> department is concerned, you better prove you're uh, illiterate. And so <laughs> you had to say something similar, though not so acute, <laughs> maybe. Okay, carry on. So what happened? So we were here trying to calculate how much if we would be able to come back to India in a year's time. Mm-hmm. And we realized that we couldn't because this basic accounting class was offered only in late September. Okay. So we had to, we thought that late September 2002, we would start the accounting class and then it would spill out till November and we won't be here until after Swami's birthday in 2002. But and you were here. How did it happen? <laughs> So one day actually we both of us were sitting and waiting for a class and we were discussing mm-hmm. that Swami told we'll finish our, our course in a year and get back to India and it looks like we won't make it. I was saying that no, no, we'll make it. Somehow Swami will take care that we'll go back there. I was telling Praveen, be rational for heaven's sake. How do you think we're going to make it? See, we have, we, we'll complete all the courses. We'll complete even the internship. But there will still be this class in late September and we'll have to stay back for taking this class. I mean, I said, looks like this, this, this is not going to come true. We will not make it. And then Praveen uh, just went down and in two minutes, he came running, smiling and he was almost jumping with joy mm. and he came running to me and he showed me something, mm. you know, and he said, see, we are going to make it. Look what I found. <laughs> what did you find? Actually, when I was speaking with Shiram, mm-hmm. I just looked out of my window and I saw a postman coming. So I went down to collect the mails and there were lots of junk mails in that. But in that junk, there was a diamond. I went and picked up and saw it was a brochure for San Bernardino Valley College. And the first page I turned, it had the basic accounting class which you required. Mm-hmm. Accounting two two not one, <laughs> and actually we didn't subscribe for that to that college at all, and it's not supposed to be there in the mail, but it came, and so it is his will and it came. So Praveen came jumping and showed it to me and said, "Sri Ram, see, look here, here is this accounting course." And if you had taken that course, you would be back here within a year. You yeah. could be back within a year, mm-hmm. but then when I when I was showing him that. He showed me the date on that. The date was well past the date the classes had started. Oh, I see. So we were we were somewhere in in the in the twelfth or thirteenth of January, uh-huh. and the class had started on the second of January. So ten days of classes gone. Yes, and in US system is once the class starts, you don't get in. So he was saying, no, it's no use of you getting that brochure up. You can put it back in the mailbox. <laughs> then I said. No, we should go and try it. And he said, the system is such that you can't do it. So I said, okay, the bus is go, going to go next mm-hmm. in five minutes. I'll I'll go and come. Mm-hmm. If you want, you come with me. Otherwise, I'll, I'll go myself and just find out and come. <laughs> His faith uh, shook my skepticism. <laughs> uh, you are convinced that this was not an accident. It was a signal from Swami. And so something had to happen. Am I right? Yeah. And I was at my at my low because of the winter weather when the sun would set at 4 p.m. And we would, you know, I would be remembering all the wonderful days and I was feeling so depressed at that time and thinking that time is going, it's really going to take a lot of time for us to get back. Mm-hmm. As I moved out of the door, Shiram also got the faith and he came along with me. So we went to the admission office and we requested them that we are from India and we need to get back before September and 
we need to take this class so that we can get back home the admission was lady told us see um, i can't do anything about it you have to go and see the dean herself mm-hmm. only she could do something about it i i looked at praveen and gave a smile see i won <laughs> okay not yet huh? <laughs> then what happened so we hunted for the business department and finally found the dean mm-hmm. we were waiting for her because she was out and when she came in we got up and greeted her and said that we are from india and we are from this charity hospitals in india which do free of uh, medical care free of cost and we are doing our administration course in lomalinda and we want we want to get back in a year's time and suddenly this lady's face broke into a big smile mm. she said you're studying in lomalinda mm. and she shows her certificate hanging on the wall mm. she had a masters degree from loma linda mm. she said i am i will do anything for the students of loma linda university okay <laughs> fantastic so then immediately she rang up the teacher who is supposed to be taking the class and she said i am sending you two students and they'll be in your class tomorrow she just without even telling introducing us to her she just said two students are going to attend the class and please take them and in. then she added see listen they are brilliant boys they have got good grades in a masters level accounting course trust me take my word for it i'm sending them and this i'm seeing class. you just 5 minutes earlier in just 5 minutes time <laughs> she she went she went to the extent of obviously she had x-ray eyes she could look at your brain <laughs> Okay then no i think the brain was tuned by swami <laughs> obviously obviously <laughs> no her, i'm sure this was totally the will of god because we started that accounting course in january we completed it by may it was that long when you missed a, 10 days we missed 10 days but it was a long course because it was a semester that college had a semester system mm-hmm. so it it extended till may and then we completed the accounting course you know. and the most wonderful thing was when we had vacation at the lomal and dynasty we we had to go for an internship but san bernardino valley college didn't have a vacation at the same time so we are in two minds whether to go for the internship or wait and take the classes when we spoke to the teacher he immediately without any hesitation he said you can go and come i'll take care of everything here they were willing to let us go they were willing to let us do what we wanted so that we could complete the course fast everybody was almost like assisting us it completing. seems as if right from the word go uh swami's hand was not merely guiding but literally pushing you all the way pushing right. you through tell me some more of this pushing that you had there exciting pushing shall i say there was another <laughs> class which we had to take in um, environmental health Mm-hmm. there was a class in environmental health and uh, i was reading up for the first day of class and i read the i read the the material our teacher had put put on the in our mailboxes i was reading the material and i told praveen praveen just have a look at this stuff we seem to have covered a lot of bit of this seems to be the same stuff that we have studied in our masters in chemistry and our masters in bioscience mm-hmm. we had environmental science papers yes, where did we covered this so i said should we sit and study the same thing during this class so we went and approached the professor and we didn't know that there is any system of waiving the classes but just we just wanted to give it a try hmm. we went to our uh, our counselor and asked him hmm. we already have taken the environmental class back in india can we transfer the credits here hmm. he said you you must not you can you must why do you want to waste time <laughs> why do you want to waste your precious time do one thing just send me the syllabus hmm. that you have studied in this environmental science papers hmm. from the sat science institute of higher learning and we we immediately requested our registrar sir to send us the papers he sent us the syllabus papers we we gave it to the professor who was teaching us that paper she went through the syllabus she closed the thing looked at us and said you could as well teach my class <laughs> <laughs> that is good <laughs> she said there is no need for you to take this course and she immediately signed a form when she wavered us she gave us a waiver from taking the course 
so that was another course which we just skipped over like a hurdle you were saying something about bhajan singing tell me something about that <laughs> actually it, it started during the winter because it used to get dark by 4 we were feeling very sort of depressed everything was dark by 4 and there was no one to talk to because we were new there so believe me sir it's totally it's a totally different experience you are studying all the years of your life in a hostel of swami where there is so much life in the air and all of a sudden you're cast into an unknown land <laughs> just two of you sitting in the room and the people whom you your near and dear ones and most of all swami is physically so far away so what we did was we tried to feel his omnipresence so we mm. decided let's sit think of him that's the best that's the best way to raise our spirits so we decided to start doing bhajans mm-hmm. so we used to just alternate between both of us when he used to lead i used to follow and when i lead he follows so two men bhajan band without <laughs> harmonium without tabla <laughs> no just just voices and we would clap and sing okay and then this, we couldn't even light agarbatti because the smoke alarm is to yes, go yes yes okay so then what happened how long did this go on this went on for for i think 9 months mm-hmm. we whenever we we didn't have class in the evening mm-hmm. we should do bhajans and when he had classes we had no other choice but go to the classes and slowly after one or two months mm-hmm. many many people who were staying in the nearby apartments they heard us saying and mm-hmm. they curiously came and they sat in front of our door and they were doing bhajans when we looked and we we also called them in and they they sat with us and they These followed people who came they knew about swami they know bhajans and things like that or this was the first exposure to swami some of them did hmm. some of them did some of them didn't mm-hmm. actually the first people to come hmm. were a couple of indians mm-hmm. a couple of indians staying there they were also taking course or they, they were, were students in lomalinda mm-hmm. and they one day it it happened on a day when when i was telling praveen praveen our bhajans are getting so boring mm. believe me it's so lifeless mm. we both are singing and we are we are not the best of singers <laughs> we are just hearing each other's voice <laughs> i think we need more people mm. you know just just that thought came and just just voiced it out mm. and there were two young men so swami sent two fellows <laughs> who came that day and incidentally they were telugu boys oh and and they said they said uh, see uh, we've been hearing you boys uh, sing every day uh, can we come today and join you all they didn't say it was horrible they didn't say it was <laughs> horrible the they said we never get a chance to pray will you please let us pray with you all so they walked in and then then they they saw the photo of swami and mm-hmm. then they started asking us we said yes we are from puttaparthi we are mm. from this thing they said we have heard so much about saiba but mm. we could never come there mm. at least let us join us join you all in prayer mm-hmm. so they would so both of them joined us and then slowly some more some more of their friends their classmates mm. people around started trickling in mm-hmm. and we would have at sometimes as many as 12 people mm-hmm. in our little apartment and these were not all indians these were not all indians mm-hmm. some were chinese and some were uh, koreans they didn't mind singing bhajans no they would just sit and listen to us mm-hmm. <laughs> they just listened they didn't sing mm-hmm. because some of them are buddhist actually yeah, and you, you sang sarvadharma bhajans i'm sure we sang sarvadharma bhajans we would actually, sing actually we sang every every bhajan we knew <laughs> every bhajan we knew there was only no, both of us the point singing. i'm making is uh, i suppose uh, they realized that you were they realized that uh, really looking at god as the father of all people they would ask us what religion are you all like which religion do you all belong to did you say religion of love or something like that <laughs> we said that we said that we we believe that god is one mm-hmm. we believe that it's not religion that how we, did it go down they With those people they took it very they well, it very well. Mm-hmm. they they raised the eyebrows then <laughs> one of them even went to the action to ask but isn't india a country where hindus and muslims don't get along <laughs> <laughs> it is it is he had he sadly had the wrong picture of india no that is true at the lower level there are people who do these things but that doesn't mean the founding principles are at fault okay actually we told about our philosophy of accepting all religions and we told them that we celebrate all religious festivals like 
Eid, Buddha, Buddha Purnima, Purnima, Christmas and Christmas all that. We even told our Chinese classmates, we, we, we celebrate Chinese, Chinese New Year. Chinese New Year. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And they were all, they were all thrilled. Mm. Because Did you have any occasion to show photographs and things like that? Yes, sir. We had taken a CD from here, mm-hmm. which contained lots of wonderful pictures about Swami's work and Swami's mission, the work done here, the hospitals, the college, the, the Seva organization around mm-hmm. the world over. And when we showed these pictures... What about Gram Seva? Gram, you didn't have any pictures no, of Gram we, Seva? we didn't have Oh, you missed that one. That's a pity. Okay. We missed that one. Mm-hmm. But, but this was enough to pull them over completely. Mm-hmm. And they would ask, oh my God, it is... This this little man in that robe <laughs> does all this. He's responsible for this revolution. <laughs> and then, how about the faculty? The faculty they're very responsive to our needs, and they used to keep asking us how is the situation in the healthcare situation in India, so that we can tell you what can be done to improve the situation or what they can learn from us. So they're very kind. How did uh, the philosophy of Swami's hospital impact on them? Because I'm sure nobody would believe that such a thing is possible. But it is going on for the last uh, 12 years as far as Puttaparthi is concerned, 3 years as far as Bangalore is concerned. Right. So, so I, I mentioned to you about my accounting professor. Yes. And uh, he told me that day that Loma Linda was a charity hospital. And then I asked him, sir, um, what kind of charity do you do? In Loma Linda. Mm. So he told me that, uh, see, we our patients come in and in case they don't have insurance, mm-hmm. in case they are not able to pay their health bills, we try our best to um, provide them insurance and see to it that they, are, they pay their bills. But in case they don't pay their bills, we write off the care given to them as charity care. In other words, they become charitable if your purse is empty. <laughs> not <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> not, not otherwise. And and then they, they said that we do only a certain percent of our our, our expenses we write off as ch- our charity. And did they understand that here was a hospital when no one was charged, you may be a king or a pauper, did they understand that? We, 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 when we told them that, mm. they said... But apart from the financial angle, were they able to grasp something about the love, the climate of love that uh, permeates Swami's hospital? Did you have any occasion to tell them about, for example, the Sevadal and the way our old students work there? We, we told them. So we told them about, we told them that we don't have a housekeeping department. Mm-hmm. Because the entire housekeeping, the cleaning up of the entire hospital is done by Sevals. We don't have specific... Sec- also security. We don't have specific security because everything is done by volunteers. We don't have people delivering food. We don't have people delivering drugs. We don't have people delivering intra-departmental documents, inter-departmental documents because everything is done by volunteers. And we told them that volunteers come from throughout the country. Their jaw dropped. And we also told them that... I have personally seen, when my wife was ill there, I was there for 40 days, I've seen uh, Sevadal from places like Arunachal Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, all over the place. It was just amazing. In fact, one day I ran into a man. He was actually a professor of mathematics in Indore. I had to go and locate the telephone exchange to make a call. And then I found this man was there. And uh, earlier I saw him pushing a wheelchair with some cobbler or something like that. Imagine a professor of mathematics <laughs> in a university. Pushing. This sort of thing happens uh, all the time, but we don't notice it. It's just amazing. And I was just wondering whether those people realize that this miracle of love is taking place here. Actually, mm-hmm. like when we are doing a rotation in the hospitals, they used to tell us that all these people who retired and who cannot stay back home because they they are bored at home, they come and work in the hospitals. So when we told that we also have a group of volunteers who come and work, they they thought that they were just from surrounding areas and they are retired. Mm-hmm. But when we told them that they are from all over India and even India some, is a big country, and, and we told them some of them are doctors, some of them are chartered accountants, some mm-hmm. of them are engineers, MBAs, mm-hmm. all of them come and render. A week or so, a week of service, a week in the year, they will come and render a week of service 
for their satisfaction just for the sake of love they want to participate in this big act of love that goes on mm-hmm. and they were they were bowled over when we told them that the the perfusionists in our hospital mm-hmm. the people who run accounts in our hospital the people who work on the lithotripsy machine in our hospital such people are masters level students they are mbas they are masters in financial management they are people who gave up a career to to just dedicate their life in this act of love they they were touched. and uh, as an expression of gratitude to swami that magnet that, that holds them there they asked us actually they asked us why why do you want to so in a charity hospital one one of our one of our classmates he went to the extent to ask why do you want to serve in a charity hospital see there's no career in a charity hospital <laughs> <laughs> you all are young men you all are young men and you you all should have ambition why don't you why don't you go for a corporate hospital hmm. and then we 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 told them we told them that Did you say you want to stay healthy if you go to corporate hospital you get blood pressure <laughs> and stress we we related diseases we, we told them that mm. throughout our, our entire education throughout our life has given totally free of cost we told them that whatever we are today is because of that university of because of that institution because of the founder of that institution our lord our master he said that we want to give our lives to his mission some of them grasped it some of them said we were sounding too idealistic <laughs> well that's the way it would appear to the skeptics but then one day the skeptics to get converted now listen <clears throat> there are a number of things we have to discuss uh, and uh, it looks like you have got plenty of stories up your sleeve so maybe i am going to stop here so that you can come back again and tell me and all our listeners about your wonderful experiences that you had there you must have had there i'm sure both as a student and as a, an individual living in the community there so we'll take a break at this point and i thank you for being with us on behalf of myself radio sai and the listeners and come back again with more stories thank you sai ram sai ram thank you sir sai ram and welcome back both of you I am very happy to tell you that uh, the earlier interviews that we have broadcast have elicited tremendous appreciation from our listeners and they are all eager to know hear more from you so maybe we could pick up from where we left left off last time i think if i remember correct you were sort of halfway to or three fourths of the way to graduation am i right yes so can you just very quickly tell us what happened from then on to the point where you got your degrees did you have to wear gowns and all that <laughs> yeah <laughs> you had to wear all the graduation regalia oh, you are very diplomatic you didn't tell, you know not telling us what it is anyway <laughs> tell us uh, uh, what happened towards the end of your stay we had completed 9 months hmm. in uh, in the us and our, our um, spring quarter was coming to an end hmm. we usually have graduation at the end of spring hmm. so it's somewhere in the month of in the first week of june mm-hmm. by the time we had reached the first week of june we realized that we we still had two subjects to complete mm-hmm. and we also had our 400 hour long internship to do mm-hmm. and 400 had, long hour long means how many weeks does it amount 3 months 3 months okay 3 months so july august september hmm. so we had not completed we had not completed our studies formally as yet but we couldn't attend graduation the next year because we were going to be here the next year mm-hmm. the only chance we had for graduation they don't then. have this uh, facility in absentia thing which is very common in india they have it but they said no that you'll miss the yeah, okay, graduation that's right. that's so the famous american graduation <laughs> <laughs> so we just decided to give it a shot and we applied for uh, just requested them if they would let us graduate mm. then our, our dean very much consented and she said next year you're going to be in america so even though you have not completed this we will let you you mean you're going to be in india oh sorry uh-huh. ne- next year you're going to be in india by the way america was discovered when they were trying to come to india <laughs> <laughs> okay actually what happened was uh, in the first application we gave it was kind of rejected and they said that you still have two more classes to go mm-hmm. at least six credits and a three month long internship to go and they said This is the application for graduation. Yeah, you mean? we had to fill yeah. application for graduation. 
then uh, next day itself the dean called us back and said oh, since you guys are not going to be there for the graduation next year we had thought like it was a pleasure to have you with us in lowlander and we want to get rid of you <laughs> <laughs> actually they they were trying to induce us to come for phd there oh i see they did were, you <laughs> feel that the hand of swami was behind this change of mind because uh, normally we, this sort of thing doesn't happen uh, she actually asked us what are you going to be doing next year at this time we said we're going to be working in that hospital remember we told you all about it <laughs> she said yes yes the free hospital <laughs> Uh, we won't be able to come because uh, you should have said not free loving hospital <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is in fact yeah. carry on so she said that so you know so you won't be coming next year then she said will you ever be coming to america we said we don't know <laughs> not now it doesn't look like you'll be coming for a long time mm-hmm. so she smiled and said we'll make an exception in your case good and so that happened so that but happened. you still had to take those courses we had to take yeah. those courses so where did it. you take them and how did, how how did it go we took those courses in summer actually so it was like i think you mentioned it last time didn't you about that uh, prospectus coming and all that no that was that, that was, was in, that, that was, was different. in the winter quarter oh i see actually that was one of the prerequisites for graduation mm-hmm. and so what is this course and where did you take it this course was accounting oh accounting the, yes the yes the first one was accounting now this one the three two courses we had to take um strategic planning for healthcare organizations and health behavior psychology mm-hmm. we had to take these two papers as well as to our internship so we took it we started our internship and we would come back for a week of summer class mm. and then go back do, continue our internship and come back again for you didn't get confused class. by all this <laughs> no because summer classes are in a week format or a 3 day 4 day format it's a 3 okay. day format with 8 uh, to 8 it starts in the morning at 8 and goes till night 8 Three days continuous. All Tell the- me uh, one thing. In this uh, coursework that you have there, do you have a sort of continuous evaluation like we have here in some of our courses? Yes, it's, it's, it's continuous evaluation. You're graded almost. Sometimes they surprise you with good quizzes in mm-hmm. every class. And- almost every class we have quizzes and most of the weightage, almost 80% of the weightage goes to quizzes projects how did you find that system were you prepared for it or was it very different and were you it it didn't shock us it didn't shock you it didn't shock us uh-huh. instead we found it to be slightly breezy <laughs> <laughs> uh, did your experience here help you in any way tremendously hmm? all the seminars hmm. the presentations in our classes hmm. especially the awareness class <laughs> presentations oh you, even that helped very <laughs> yeah. good so because, because we had to face an audience we had to speak actually they asked us to dress dress up in formals and give a presentation as if you're giving it to a board of directors oh, that's that's so, how we do it mm-hmm. our awareness class presentations helped us a lot oh that's <laughs> very nice i feel flattered actually <laughs> maybe i should charge you a fee <laughs> <laughs> only problem is for me doesn't have any fees okay we always thought actually you know before we were leaving we thought that we would we may not match up to people outside mm-hmm. but when we went there we were surprised because the training in this place you know puts you right in front i'm very happy to hear that but i'm not surprised you know just last uh, week in one of our classes one of our boys was telling us that a uh, former student who did uh, msc here has gone to switzerland to do his phd in bioscience or whatever and he says his hostel training has more or less put him ahead of others He says, you know, when Friday comes, they all quit work. They can't yeah. work long. Right. Uh, whereas here, there is dedication, one-pointedness, and he is able to space himself out very nicely and not to collapse. Uh, those people uh, just don't understand how this has happened. So uh, we, we seem to be giving some very healthy training in time management and balanced approach to work study relaxation and all that okay. so that training for so many years obviously has helped you too i'm very happy to hear that and how did you find the examinations were they stiff we had a few papers in clinic in mm. few clinical papers and a few manage, management papers mm. the management papers were all right but the clinical papers they were a bit tough but then you were not used to that kind of subjects that's also true yeah and also most of the questions were based on the american health system so oh, we are naturally. not very familiar with it mm-hmm. but but we still we did very well in them you did very well we did very well in you did very well so we did very well for you <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> those are unstated but the most surprising thing was the the thing which we really felt mm-hmm. 
that was a was a mark of our progress mm. in that place was what happened in our college bowl mm. uh, every college, college bowl bowl it's every year mm. uh, every year all the all the healthcare universities all the universities in southern california mm-hmm. that offer these healthcare management courses mm. they have a college bowl oh it's like the football bowl i see yes, but this is a inter <laughs> but the, this is where brains clash with each other <laughs> on a i know on okay, a, on a, follow, on a quiz forum uh, okay so so we the quiz is mainly about the healthcare system in the united states mm-hmm. it's a intercollegiate quiz mm-hmm. and uh, on the night mm-hmm. before the college bowl mm-hmm. our the chair of our depart of our department comes walks up to us and says uh it's embarrassing for me you know but you've just been in this country for 5 months will you represent the university oh, <laughs> amazing amazing fantastic <laughs> that is a real <laughs> <laughs> nice to hear i would say actually we did better than most of the american students <laughs> oh i'm not surprised we are used to swami asking us of the cow we don't any notes also it's a very difficult question anyway that's very nice to hear so let me ask you um, did you have any any unusual or memorable experiences of any kind where you know something that you learned here came out i I remember one experience is very very uh, I always remember this it was sometime in um, in in fall mm-hmm. we were getting our flu shots flu shots shots for getting ready for the flu season oh, i see so flu starts in fall is it flu starts late fall late fall and so. then gets into winter and that's where people are you know very wary about it so they get their flu shots in fall so we were getting our shots there when a when an elderly lady mm-hmm. walked up to us and asked wouldn't does any of you like to earn earn a quick 20 dollars so quick 20 dollars <laughs> what was the deal <laughs> so we said well what's what's the what's the matter she had she had a few boxes boxes they, they look quite heavy mm-hmm. three boxes she said will you just help me take those boxes to the car and if you do that i'm willing to pay you 20 dollars So <laughs> we smiled and said all right we'll do it for you we picked up those boxes put it in her car and then she opened her bag to give us the 20 dollars and then uh, she said take it we said um, no in in our culture we we don't we don't take money for these things we look at these things as an opportunity to serve we want to thank you for giving us this opportunity Did she faint? <laughs> she was shocked. <laughs> she was she was really shocked. Mm-hmm. And we got back. We got back to to the flu vaccination counter mm-hmm. and our friends asked, "So, did you get did you earn your money?" Mm-hmm. Our classmates were there. They asked us, "Did you earn your money?" So we said, "No, we didn't take any money." They were shocked. "Are you guys gone mad?" <laughs> <laughs> That lady was giving you Twenty bucks, bucks, and, bucks yeah. and you're a student. You're a young man, and <laughs> <laughs> we smiled and we didn't speak much because we knew that they may not be able to understand. What was the reaction of the lady after the first shock? Did you when you explained this to her? What was the reaction of that lady? Did she, she make was, any comments? She was totally flabbergasted because mm-hmm. they had never seen such a thing happening in yes. their lives. Mm-hmm. She said, "She said thank you." <laughs> I. I don't know what to say. I've never seen this have to happen to me before. And the the most beautiful part was you no know, I had, by the time I went to the counter the flu count the the counter was closed. Mhm. And because I had gone to help the lady mm-hmm. put her things in her car and I came back the counter was closed. And uh, I, they said one of the ladies one of the lady doctors in the counter told me you may have to come tomorrow. Mm. So I said all right I'll be willing to come. Mm. Suddenly another person walked into the office and walked up to this lady and said hey i saw this young man helping this lady carry her boxes mm. and he didn't take any money from her mm-hmm. and this this lady doctor called me back and said you helped the lady put her boxes in her car and you didn't take any money no 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 i'll open the counter for you come and get your shot <laughs> you got your reward immediately <laughs> i got my reward immediately with a prick of course <laughs> But it was a healthy reward. <laughs> That's very, very nice. One more very interesting thing which we have not shared with anyone was it was 
मिड विंटर एंड वन ऑफ आर क्लासमेट्स ही बिलोंग टू डिफरेंट कोर्स ऑल टूगेदर ही एड ए रूम मेट हु गॉट एन ऑफर फॉर फॉर अनदर रूम एट अ चीपर प्राइस एंड ही इमीडिएटली लेफ्ट दिस गाय हर्च एंड ही जस्ट वेंट ऑफ टू द अदर रूम एंड दिस गाय ही हैड टू पे थाउजेंड डॉलर्स फॉर दैट रूम पर मंथ thousand dollars per month he had so no place to stay he like. had no no place to stay and, and winter is terrible over there mm. at 4 it gets dark yes you know and it's terrible so this guy didn't have anywhere to go he came and he asked us see brother i don't have any place to stay and if i stay back in the room i'd pay thousand dollars i'm an overseas student and i can't afford that which country he's an indian indian and he asked us will you please allow me to stay stay in your room for like get a, another accommodation we said brother you're always welcome mm. it's our policy to help others mm. and you're like a your brother you're you're also indian and we're all like brothers so come in and stay with us so he stayed with us for a couple of days before he could get a room for himself mm. and then finally he <laughs> for after the, after this couple of days he said now i want to pay the rent for these days oh <laughs> come on <laughs> he told him no 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 there was no need and actually this boy was the first to join us in our budgets oh i see so that's so, how the uh, you got your first recruit group built up <laughs> accommodation that's how the budget group built up it started with him and also his, don't tell me others also wanted a competition <laughs> to join your budget club and also his parents uh, they called us up from india and they thanked us a lot oh. saying that we have heard of sai baba but we never heard that his students are as kind as he is <laughs> well you proved that you are an extension of swami that's very nice and that's the way it should be i remember one very touching incident which is not related to something we learned in that country but something to do with swami mm-hmm. it was we were nearing graduation and um, we had the suit which swami had given us of course mm-hmm. when we left this country to wear for graduation but on the day before the graduation when uh, our guardian there mm. came to came to see us mm. he had just come from india he had come from puttaparthi mm. mm. so when he opened the door for him he greeted us and said sairam boys and see what swami has sent for you for your mm-hmm. graduation swami said that since you are attending an american graduation you should wear an american suit <laughs> and he so he sent a blazer a, a shirt a pant a tie with shoes and said the suit he said swami said the suit you have is an old suit <laughs> swami told you all to wear this new suit for your graduation and we were really touched cuz we we were here far away i mean physically 16000 miles away from swami and swami remembered even that you know, detail even that detail like he gives us clothes before his birthday for the convocation this is different this, different. this is so <laughs> yeah. different It, we were so much so touched it seems swami has told that since all the american students they'll be wearing uh, the formal suits and coming and you all won't be having those formal suits so he especially send it he blessed them and send them pack them in nice box and send it for us we it was were, very very touching we were, we were really we don't want to wear the convocation <laughs> you can grow over that dress <laughs> <laughs> naturally <laughs> and uh, any other interesting experience the best part of our stay you know was towards the end our three month internship mm-hmm. which we did in this hospital called the Marian Medical Center mm-hmm. and it was in it was in a place called in a city called Santa Maria and um, this three month internship was really amazing usually what happens is that um, students after their uh, after the course when they go to a hospital for the internship they usually get a uh, kind of a data entry sorry for my ignorance your university didn't have any hospital where you could have had this internship university had a hospital but this hospital mm. is part of a big system called the catholic healthcare west mm. there's a group of 48 hospitals and this hospital even though the other hospitals in the system were kind of not having that good practice this hospital had very good practice and it was this it was the hospital where you went for internship yeah. oh yeah. see the university also had a hospital but mm. it was too big mm. so what what our professors advised us was don't go to a big hospital mm. go to a small hospital 
where people would be able to give you attention personally. By small, you mean? Small means 200, 300 bed hospital. 300 bed. Because big hospitals are thousand, thousand beds. more than over a thousand beds, mm-hmm. and you really get lost in the place. There are so many Naturally. departments. So they said to learn, it'll be better to go and look at things. You know. So you went to this uh, center. It's called um, Marion, Marion Medical, Medical Center. center. It's oh. it's a center of excellence for Catholic Healthcare West mm-hmm. Corporate, and um, there we were right under the CEO of the hospital mm-hmm. for three months. The CEO took it personally and said that. he is going to mentor us for 3 months and prepare us to run hospitals in india he was why did he become interested well <laughs> in, in you his, that in, in his hospital mm-hmm. there was a cardiologist mm-hmm. who was a devotee of swami mm-hmm. and he he comes to puripati regularly and dr seti oh i see dr. oh he Ram works Sethi. there so dr ram seti works in this oh, hospital i see so dr ram seti went and spoke to the ceo and said i We have two young boys coming from this hospital in India, and so he, he paved the us, way for you. He told nice. us. He told. He told the CEO about the hospital. He told the CEO about us, mm-hmm. and the next morning we were with Dr. Seti in the in the in the CEO's chamber, and the CEO had called all managers mm-hmm. for he a breakfast meeting. All, he had invited all the managers to come and introduce themselves to us and. Oh my god and, you were given <coughs> vip treatment we were given yeah. <laughs> we were shocked by we were shocked he said <laughs> because what we heard from our fellow students at lomland was when you go for an internship it's like worst kind of job you ever get <laughs> <laughs> you won't see anyone bigger than the janitor <laughs> <laughs> okay so here you were under the ceo uh, what and, kind of a job did you do and the ceo took care that he immediately each manager he asked mm-hmm. he said what all things can these boys do in a department so that they can grow in their knowledge and immediately at, at our first meeting itself he decided our schedule for the entire course of the internship it looks like uh, they were all very keen to help somis hospital in yeah. some manner or the other am i right they were yeah. very keen because when they came to know about the hospital they came to know about the work we were going to do mm. they said we are ready to train them in whatever whatever way we can See the power of Swami's love. They have not seen mm-hmm. Swami. They have not seen the hospital, but they experience the love. Who is mo- not only that? Mm. They said we will teach you, mm. and for teaching you, we will be paying you. What? <laughs> <laughs> we were like, what? Said, yes, because when you are interns, something you, is wrong somewhere. <laughs> they said you are going to be interns. You are going to be employees of our hospital for three months. Yes, and when we take employees, we pay employees. <laughs> But we told but them. But we said that they, they taught you as if you are a student, but they paid you as if you are an employee. I mean, they're having the cake and eating it too. <laughs> That's fantastic. And no, they, they took so much care about us. Like every day, the manager of the department where you stay, he should take us for lunch and tell the counter that these are a special guests and you shouldn't charge anything from them. My God! And so, house on the <laughs> <laughs> like house. On the ho- house, and then they made sure the first few days. You know, we attended a department manager's meeting, mm-hmm. and there we picked up only salad mm. from the from the lunch counter. It was a lunch meeting. Mm. We picked up only salad. Mm. The person in charge of food services, mm. the manager of the food services, who was in charge of arranging all food, mm-hmm. and even the hospital. just noticed it mm. and he quietly asked us are you people vegetarian mm-hmm. we said yes we are pure vegetarians <laughs> <laughs> like and then he, he 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 asked us what is the indian definition of vegetarian then we mm. told him no eggs nothing <laughs> clean food only only vegetables and the next thank god because i remember sorry to interrupt <laughs> but this is real funny i was flying to america in 85 and uh, up to frankfurt i had no problem because the flight originated in delhi there was a change of crew and they brought some stuff i said look i am a vegetarian vegetarian will you eat beef <laughs> i said oh my god what kind of vegetarian is <laughs> carry on so the next time whenever we had any meeting or whenever or even when we would go for lunch this person would ensure that there were one or at least two or one vegetarian dishes made specially and even if there was no dish there they should specially prepare inside and get vegetarian dishes for us oh my god you were really <laughs> taken care of we were, we were really taken care of mm. not like that mm. each uh, department manager the entire internship was phased out like this we would go through all the departments in the hospital spend time with each department manager do little projects for them 
Mm-hmm. Finally, in the last few weeks, we would spend time with the vice presidents, mm-hmm. and finally, we would spend the last week with the CEO. Mm-hmm. You said they treated you as employees. Uh, would I be too curious if I were to ask uh, whether they paid you and uh, what, how much did they pay you? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we they wanted to pay us a lot, but we said we don't want. First, we said we don't want any money, and they mm-hmm. said that if you if you don't take money, we are not going to allow you to work here. <laughs> Oh, so the initial- so we, we said okay, give us your minimum wages. Mm. So minimum wages was six dollars. Six dollars per hour. So we said fine, and we already were thinking of giving it back to them when you're coming back. Mm-hmm. So first week went on for with six dollars, and next week suddenly I I saw my invoice and that person he scored their twelve dollars per hour. I called him up and asked him. Why are you paying us more? We told we agreed for six dollars. He said no. Our conscience doesn't permit us to do pay you six dollars. <laughs> You're doing more than that. <laughs> oh my the, God! The CEO, the CEO told we spoke to the CEO and the CEO told us, you know, the moment you complete this your internship, you deserve to be paid four four times twelve dollars in your first job. You'll be paid that much at least. So. The least we could do is pay you twelve dollars. <laughs> Don't embarrass us, please take it. <laughs> so we we just smiled and said, "All right, we we had something up our sleeve." <laughs> okay. So what what is it that you had up your sleeve? So we completed the three months of internship, and after the three months of internship, where we did projects for them, we did special projects for them, and they were really you know, thrilled by. the work we did and in fact some of our projects uh, they wanted to make it system wide mm. we did it for marion medical center and they said they're going to take this and project it over the system and compare the entire system based on our projects so the the entire work came out very well totally because of swami's grace mm-hmm. because we were two in, two interns barely they would ask us you all are so young it's it's so hard to believe that <laughs> you boys are doing such things mm. And Actually, did you tell them where the real inspiration and things like that came we, from? We Actually, did. one of the, when, while we're doing this project, like we're not getting any ideas. Mm-hmm. Our mind was blank, and we're just thinking like how we should go about doing this mm-hmm. because their information system was a bit complicated. It was named WIT, and we had to gather data from that. And even those people didn't know how to take out the the data they required. So we are just totally confused and we just prayed to swami internally and one day we just sat in front of the system and both of us simultaneously got two brilliant ideas which which helped us to extract the data from that and analyze it and do a good project for them i'm just uh, reminded in passing of what krishna says in the gita he says i am the excellence thing that shows up through you I am the mind. So that was the Lord manifesting through that brilliant idea. Carry on. So and what happened? Uh, and you were able to complete the project we, and the internship. We completed the project and the internship. During the internship, we slowly started telling them about Swami, about our hospital. Them means so. All the, the department managers. managers. And they were listening. They were. In fact, every lunch session, they used to ask us the same questions, mm-hmm. like, "How are how are you able to do so much free service?" In fact, just yesterday I got an email from the from five managers. Hmm. They were asking like, "How is your work going on? You must be doing great work over there. You said, surely said, come there and see what you're they doing." They said, "You all are a part of a great mission, and we are proud that we were able to do something for you." That's that's real nice. Those were the emails we got from them. <laughs> yes. Now uh, you were telling me you had something up your sleeve. You have not it. <laughs> Disclose what it is. So finally, after, I hope it's not a secret. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, after the three months of internship, it was our last day at work in Madden Medical Center, and that morning, they decided they called us for a breakfast mm-hmm. meeting, and and the breakfast there was only vegetarian food. Oh, they had to eat breakfast vegetarian too. No, in your honor, and, and, yeah. <laughs> and, and the CEO was oh. eating mashed potatoes, <laughs> looking at us and, and saying, "Guys, this is all because of you." <laughs> I'm eating this because of you guys. <laughs> Thank God he didn't mash you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he was very, he, he was very, he was very happy to have us and mm-hmm. take us under his wing, mm-hmm. and and that he he told us that morning, mm-hmm. this afternoon we are having a program in your honor, 
Thank it's God. a it's a farewell party we uh-huh. wish to give all of you uh-huh. to to give both of you because we were so proud to have two youngsters like you but that day he as a institute man i should say i'm very proud to hear that <laughs> that's exactly what swami says and you then, should bring credit to our institute thank you for that <laughs> anyway carry on and then uh, chakko uh, mr chakko made a proposition he just looked at us and said i'm willing to hire you both here <laughs> stand <laughs> I will seduction pay you 48 dollars an hour <laughs> okay then he Wait. started telling us you could work with me for a year and then i will send you to another ceo he will keep you with him for a year and then to another ceo so after 3 years of externship here <laughs> you can start out as a vp in one of vice president in one of our hospitals why don't you consider the offer <laughs> we told him that even if we give million dollars we won't stay back i am reminded of a statement <laughs> in the bible get thee behind me satan <laughs> okay so there he was trying to tempt you and you rejected very said, wisely no very way. Nice. okay very good so you passed the test <laughs> and then finally um, that afternoon in the quadrangle in the garden there they held a nice farewell party in our honor and there was a big cake for us to cut and, and everything was vegetarian. everything was vegetarian again <laughs> <laughs> they made a, actually at least some 20 dishes for us and everything was vegetarian fantastic <laughs> they what are vegetarian dishes they knew they this is mr jack brazy the 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 food services manager came and said we have exhausted all the vegetarian dishes <laughs> out here for you you should have left him with some recipes <laughs> anyway maybe you don't know any cooking that's really okay. so finally they they gave us little mementos for us they gave us nice beautiful clock pieces and said we're really proud of you proud to have you both here and we learned so much from you then we said no we learned more from you and finally uh, we paused looked at each other and, and there were all managers around and we said mr chak goa we have a present for you too and uh, praveen and i we both pulled out two envelopes and gave it to mr chak goa he was a bit puzzled mm-hmm. when he opened the envelopes he found checks for $4800 and $4800 from Praveen and me he was shocked each of you $4800 okay he was shocked are you guys giving this really or it's a fake check <laughs> 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 so then he said what is this he said chuck remember you gave us you paid us we asked you not to pay us and even though you taught us you paid us and all this is the money you gave us for doing the last 400 hours of for work we put in here everybody in the in everybody in the quadrangle was stunned to silence and then they after, could have, they after a few seconds they started clapping and they they started <laughs> clapping and they said what do you want us to do with this money they said guys are you sure you want to mm-hmm. you want to give us this he mm-hmm. said yes this is for you all because we don't we have come here totally only for learning and when we learn we don't want to earn that's that's something we would never do that's something we would never taught to do I want to add a footnote to that story. Your the news of this incident reached here and one day in the afternoon you know after the, the interview sessions were over the boys had come in for darshan so me came out in the veranda and he very proudly announced see our boys told them We have come here to learn not to earn. And there was a huge thunderous applause from your juniors and the staff and everybody else who could hear Swami. Of course, uh, Swami made Anil Kumar repeat it loudly so that the whole of the cycle one thal could hear him without the help of a microphone. And there was really thunderous applause and I can tell you every one of us were very was very proud. You probably don't know about it, but I was an eyewitness to the fact how your mother felt very very proud both for you and for the way the entire audience reacted uh, to the news that was really a very proud moment for us because you really put the institute on a very high pedestal okay now i have another question for you you're back you've been here for some time do you feel that what you learned there has been helping you because you're going to the hospital regularly immensely in any particular way especially in uh, looking at quality looking at in 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 america the approach to medicine mm-hmm. is very different mm-hmm. they have they have all they have processes of quality control in every place mm-hmm. they say that 
when you mm. when you make a statement that oh, i can't do anything better than this mm. that is the biggest blunder you can ever make that's when you will stop growing that's mm. when as a hospital you will stop growing that's when as a person you will stop learning that's one thing that was ingrained into us there so even when we go and look at this hospital the hospital is a wonderful place mm. but even then as we look around we say what are the little things we can do what are the little little more ways in which we can improve inch a little closer to perfection mm. we 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 have been we have been given we have been trained to look with the eye with a vision for perfection in a professional manner in a professional manner and also since we had we had interacted with all the department managers in that particular hospital we have different viewpoints about how a department should be running and so i think it'll help us a lot in the long run and it'll make us better instruments in swami's mission and more than anything we have learned that you know that when a person says something you know even though he's wrong his opinion is because of certain things he has seen certain experiences he has had and according to him he is right so maybe i should respect it and you no know, i should i should make him see the light but i should not deride his opinion that's what some says give respect to others give. let me ask another question you have seen our hospital in depth especially after the training and you have seen a hospital system there is there anything our system can teach to them if they are prepared to learn oh. or listen <laughs> <laughs> so our system has lot to teach them <laughs> can you share with us what it is that they can learn from us <laughs> if you if you ask what american hospitals can teach our hospital mm. there we would have to search for words mm. but if you would ha- we ask us to say what does our hospital have to teach american hospitals you so, would probably say i need 100 interviews oh, is that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay so there is a lot that they can, but can you put your finger on the one thing that they could learn from us most profitably not in the financial sense but in any other sense the one thing that our hospital can teach to others the rest of the world if you were asked what is it that you would see actually the very ideal of our hospital is is the lesson anyone so would can would you tell our listeners what is the ideal of our hospital because they wouldn't know so we build the hospital with a vision that no one in the world should suffer because they are not able to pay for their medical treatment because it's so costly Mm-hmm. so the, it was the act of swami selflessness and through that act of selflessness he has got into his fold mm-hmm. young men mm-hmm. women mm-hmm. senior doctors experienced nurses mm-hmm. in whom he wants to in, he wants them to cultivate mm-hmm. selflessness mm-hmm. so our entire system is is on the foundation of selflessness are you saying that selflessness can and does work and it has worked for 12 years it has and it will uh, work uh, maybe and i'm wrong by one year but it certainly worked for 11 years it has worked for 11 years mm-hmm. and it, and i think it will work for ever as long as you are prepared to be selfless and as swami said <laughs> it will stand for a thousand years and if other people can learn from what swami has done and do a bit more selfless than they are now and the world can be a very very much better place to live in absolutely i agree with you it's just tragic that the world is not paying serious attention to some of these important truths i remember professor sampath used to say for the benefit of the listeners i should mention professor sampath was the third vice chancellor of swami's university a very distinguished man in his own right and a very great devotee of bhagwan too he used to say that the money that was spent in about 15 days and during that first gulf war as it was called could have been used to set up something like 300 hospitals of the type so we had set up here in prashanti just imagine 300 yeah. hospitals and all that money was blown in 15 days because of uh, very 
different kind of priorities, shall I say. So mankind has to get back to the right priorities, then with the one-tenth or one-hundredth of this money that is being wasted, so much of good can be done, so much of love can be spread, so much of happiness can be generated, and satisfaction too. But sir, it's, I always had this doubt in my mind, you know, because uh, it's a question i also want to ask you me i'm supposed to be asking <laughs> you <the question. laughs> no, sir, because uh, we were this question was asked to us by a tv reporter in the united states when he conducted an interview for a television channel there jesus you became tv star <laughs> i didn't know that <laughs> I, i i remember what he he told us how did you happen to go to a tv station <laughs> tell us a little the, bit about no, no, the tv reporter came one, to you came to the Mag- why, medical why, why? center to oh, do a story oh, to, yeah, to come to the hospital to do a story oh, so he and heard about we, you and then he heard about us the two heroes there okay. and then he came running and said he heard about us he heard about the background we had come from he said i want to talk to you about you all about your hospital yes and all that when we told uh, when we told this tv reporter about our hospital he listened to everything and said wow this is amazing mm. but tell me how are people you know mm. just willing to give up everything mm. and come and work in your hospital mm. why are why, how 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 does money pour in how does how do how do people pour in how do materials medicine how, how is there plenty mm. you know what's the inspiring ideal no And then so what did we, you tell we, him we started telling him about swami mm. then he was perplexed he said but how can a person inspire such a thing because the very idea of a person inspiring so much of selflessness was unthinkable to him then we told him brand this is totally off the record mm. please don't show this mm. but let's the person we are talking about is not a person mm. the person we are talking about is god mm-hmm. and he was he was like a little bit puzzled and he didn't take it he didn't he didn't take it you know the the way we expected him to take it Naturally because not. he was not aware of it but then you know that set me thinking if swami says that this is an ideal for the world to follow you no know, like people in the world should take this up i feel that the hospital today runs because there is swami above to to mobilize to mobilize people you no know, to give their best I often seem to wonder that what would people outside or people in different parts of the world have a have a role model as who would who would stand up and give that much of inspiration that swami gives you see you must ask yourself the question what happens in periods of history when swami is not there as an incarnation there have been long stretches in human history but yet you find there have been people who inspired them okay if you take a man like saint francis you can say he was inspired by jesus but jesus lived long before saint francis did how did he get that inspiration and the answer to that is given by swami he says god may not be walking on earth in the form of an incarnation but god is always in your heart in every single heart of every single human being on this earth it has been so from the beginning of time and it will be so to the end of time now if you make a contact with the god within then that god will pour all his power and we you know we know that his power is limitless and it will shine through the individual he just has to open the door of his heart and we just keep it locked so we don't have to do that so all we have to do is turn the key the other way instead of closing the door we have to open the door and a few people have learned the trick they have determined at some point of time that they will be different right. that determination comes from within and then they shine you you look at uh, people like uh, the man like, uh, called father damien he went from belgium he went to some island and he worked among the, amongst the lepers, lepers. Yeah. and then there was gandhi there was vivekananda oh, albert schweitzer uh, albert schweitzer and so on there, i mean there are thousands of people mm-hmm. whom we don't know but then very recently there was mother teresa and i personally believe god within is the embodiment of compassion god within is the embodiment of love he is trying to get out from there and we are not allowing him to if only we do that we don't have to look for role models see we have to just go inside that's what i believe swami says <laughs> if we look in 
he is there yes but we don't want to look there so that's the problem i think what uh, i see here is swami is teaching every one of us whether you come from outside or whether you're grown from within the system how to open that heart and let love flood the place let there be a deluge right. and you see that i have seen this in a hospital i remember uh, when my wife was very sick there was a sevadal who used to come there <clears throat> he was from madhya pradesh he was a jeweler he was trying to act like a comedian <laughs> and he would come and say amma i will teach you telugu <laughs> the fellow did not one sentence or even a word in telugu but he was trying to be funny and you know bring cheer to my wife who was sinking i used to feel that guy was a damn nuisance i say wish he this followed go away but uh, let me tell you on the last day he came and wept like a child he said saab apko nahi jaane ka i don't want to go it is so terrible he went and you know took pictures of all the patients all the nurses everybody said please don't let me go but his turn had come it was really amazing i mean here was an ordinary man just by being in that place he had changed that is the power of love i tell you this power of love is something you have to experience i had read about it in tolstoy's works and all that but i had never never really knew what it was like until i came here it it, it has got a tremendous gripping power it just engulfs you it brings out something in you that you are not even aware of and that something is the power of god it's the power of love it's the power of compassion it becomes automatic you don't think about it yes sir so i think if people feel this way even if 1% of humanity feels this way the world would be a very different place and it is that power of love that came out of you that made all the difference to your experience so i had opened yes. the door for you right sir and when you went there You didn't have to do anything. You were just being your natural self. Yes. That's all. You didn't have to put on put on an act. You were just your natural self. Do you agree with me? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. Thank you, and I wish you all the best. Thank you for sharing all your wonderful experiences with me and our listeners. And let us hope next time we talk to you, we'll have some interesting stories to tell us about your experiences. in Swami's hospital god bless you yes. jai sai ram thank Sarans. you for having us